Welcome all, my name is Ermin and I will be your instructor in this course and I am its creator as well. So, what you all have requested for a very long time, I am sorry for that, but it took a while to actually write the whole code, uh, I have managed to bring it before you. So, here you will learn how to create an extremely advanced keylogger, one that will be one that is able to bypass antivirus protection. It has been tested out with Nodeste and McAfee as well. Neither one of those two antivirus systems have actually managed to, to detect it at all. So it was written in such a way to bypass that detection as it doesn't do anything out of the ordinary. It doesn't do anything that most other programs on your system do anyway. So it does a pretty good job at hiding itself. The keylogger was written in C++, a very low level language, so to say, uh, with a bit of a difficult syntax, I would like to, I, I would say anyway. And some of you might ask me, well, why haven't you written it in Java or C Sharp or something like that? It would have been a lot simpler. Well, the answer to that question is basically that all those programs, they have a ton load of dependencies. So this keylogger is designed so that it would run on stock installation of Windows. So you can you install Windows and you plug it in, it's going to work. It's going to work for Windows 7, 8, 8.1 and 10. It is not going to work for Vista and XP. Why? Well, I didn't really want to create something that would primarily be like for XP to show concepts of exploitation, etc. I wanted to create a real tool that, you, that is perfectly usable, that is not just a concept, that is a real tool that, uh, that is functional, that records keystrokes to the point of perfection. It can record all the keystrokes. So I actually have my keyboard here. And if you can see this keyboard, it will record all the keystrokes on this keyboard. It will record the function keys. It will record the characters, not just the letters, but special characters as well. It will, it will, it even has the capabilities of recording like print screen, uh, home end, insert, delete, num lock, these arrows, shift, enter, space, alt, whatever. So it, it actually has capabilities to record all of those buttons. Although we won't actually be recording those buttons, we'll be using them as triggers mainly for certain actions like screenshots and so on. It even has the capability of recording mouse clicks as well. So everything that a user is able to input from their keyboard or with their mouse, this keylogger has the ability to actually grab that information. Now, uh, this keylogger is also independent of the sort of keyboard, like of the sort of, of language settings that somebody has on their computer. So you can, somebody can have Japanese settings and somebody can have US settings and another person can have French settings, French language settings. It doesn't matter. It will still record the physical keys that were pressed on the keyboard. Now, the character map, of course, it can be altered to suit any of those keyboards without any problems of whatsoever. So those are some really nice features of the keylogger that it's able to record everything. It takes minimal amount of resources, the bare minimum amount of resources on the system. When you run it on your own machines, just take a look in the task manager and see how much resources does it consume. Now, you might ask me, well, why didn't you hide it in the task manager? Well, that's for that you would need a rootkit and that is not a simple task at all. That would create, that would uh, increase the difficulty of this keylogger significantly. But we have managed to hide the keylogger in the following fashion. We have managed to uh, show the keylogger in the process tree as a legit Microsoft program that is running, that is being run by Windows. So it would really take somebody with a lot of skill and a lot of knowledge to actually figure it out that there is actually a keylogger running there. Your average day user should not be able to figure it out at all. And even the advanced users will find it quite difficult to actually figure it out that there is a keylogger. But since you will know that it is there, you will be the one naming it and configuring it. And I will show you how to do this. You will be able to spot it in the process tree without problems, without any bigger problems. So you will be able to see how much resources does it consume. So it is fantastic in that regard. It consumes the bare, bare, bare minimum of the system's resources and in such a way it of course conceals itself way better. Another fantastic feature that this keylogger has is 
basically once it records the text and places it into a file it actually encrypts in that process so it grabs the information it encrypts it and then it places it into a file so if the user by some crazy chance is able to find and open that log file where the keystrokes are actually stored they will see nothing but junk we have used our own custom encryption here we couldn't use IS or something like that simply because that would add another million lines of code to the to the existing project and it would make the keylogger way too complex. But the current encryption that we're using, you will find it to be good enough as it will be quite difficult to actually, if not impossible, to decrypt it without doing the exact encryption procedure. That is why you I will show you how to create a decryption program and how to construct encryption functions within the keylogger itself. Also, when you, it has mail sending options. So it will take that file and based on some timer, I don't know, let's say every 12 hours or so, it will take that file and send it by, by a mail to your specified email address. And that file that it sends, that file will also be encrypted. So only when you download it from your mail, place it in your computer, run the decryption program, you will be able to actually see the information contained within that log file which is awesome to put, to, put it, uh, to put it mildly. Now for mail sending options, we have used PowerShell and that is why it only runs on Windows 7, 8, 8.1 and 10 due to the fact that PowerShell comes installed by default on those versions of Windows. We did not want to run, we did not want to create our own custom mail client primarily due to the fact that it would, again, increase the size of the code exponentially without any need. Now, as things are at the moment, the keylogger does not require any sort of admin privileges of whatsoever. So these are the three fundamental key features of the keylogger at the moment that you will see at the time of publishing of the at the time of, at the time when this course actually gets published. But I will be adding more and more and more features to it over time. Feel free to make suggestions. I will, I'm already working on on implementing the screenshot functionality and it will actually record all the websites that were visited and it will create screenshots based upon those websites. We also had this idea to actually implement some desktop recording features to, to actually record the screen of the desktop and to uh, create and to record the audio and to use the webcam as well. Although those are kind of complex procedures due to driver issues with the various sorts of microphones and cameras and the raw format when it is record when the screen is recorded if it is recorded in the raw format it's going to take a lot of disk space but those are still ongoing problems that we are working on to solve as best as we can as best we can but those are some of the features that you most likely can expect in the future you will be able to learn a great deal from this course a ridiculous amount of knowledge will be placed into this course however uh, some free no some knowledge of C++ is required. So you can't, I, it would be very difficult for you to just come to this course without any prior programming experience. Just take a look at it and jump into it and expect to understand everything. Even though I will pretty much explain every single line of code more or less, it will become difficult for you to understand if you have no prior knowledge of programming of whatsoever. That is why, in addition to this course, we will publish a complete C++ course, which will go from the very basics to completely advanced concepts in C++. And if you want, you can go over there and check that course out, or you can go out onto YouTube and check a lot of other courses and check a lot of other content for free there as well and learn a little bit about C++, how it works, some general programming concepts before you jump into this course. As I said, it's an awesome course. It offers a, just a ridiculous amount of knowledge and we are creating a real thing here, a real product. So a very powerful tool that will have awesome capabilities, but some knowledge is required. You cannot, it, you, can't ex, you cannot come without anything and expect to understand the entire procedure, the entire coding procedure of this keylogger to understand everything here. You will need some knowledge prior to this in regard to C++ for sure, because this keylogger has been written with C++ 11 standards. Some of the things from C++ 11 standards have been used, a good amount of them actually. And if you have no prior knowledge, you will find it very difficult to understand what was written. So I strongly advise you 
to either go onto YouTube and check out a good amount of C++ videos for free or to check out our C++ course. You might wonder why didn't I just merge them into one? No way. Way too many lectures. Way too many. For me, because this keylogger, as it stands now, it will have around 30 videos, something like that. But once we begin adding more and more and more functionalities into it, it's going to grow. It will be like, probably by the end, it will be, there will be around 90 videos. So there will be a lot of content. So this initial version is there. It's completely functional. It works to the point of perfection. And you will you will be able to look at it. I will I will explain it in great deal in great detail and all that. But more features will be added. We will add a ton load of more features to it. I hope that I will basically be able to cover all the features that you have requested for me because a lot of people requested me to make this keylogger, so I've decided to make it and I've implemented as many features as I could up to this point of time. And more and more will be implemented in order to satisfy all of your demands, or at least to an extent that I can, at least to an extent that my knowledge goes to. Before we wrap things up, before I end it all, let me just make two more, let me just explain two more things, or mention two more things. Please do not use this software for anything illegal. This is here strictly for educational purposes. I have not designed it, nor do you have my approval to use it for anything illegal, nor am I responsible if you do. I'm telling you now not to do it. It is a very bad idea. And in addition to not using it for anything illegal, please do not use it for anything immoral as well. You do not have my permission for that. As I said, I have designed it. It's a very powerful tool. It can cause some serious damage. But please do not use it for anything illegal. Don't abuse the knowledge. Take the knowledge and use it uh, in a positive way, in a legal way. Trust me, you can make a lot of money in a legal way in the pen testing world. There really is no need to go and to do something against the law, get yourself in trouble. There is no justification for it. There's no financial justification for it to begin with because you already have plenty of jobs which are in the pen testing industry. Another thing that I wanted to mention in addition to this is my YouTube channel where we'll most likely create a vlog of some sort and we'll post weekly updates. So feel free to check it out. The link will be in the description and I will place there general updates in terms of what are we doing, what are our future projects, how will the keylogger progress, what additional features will be inserted. You will also uh, get there, get some announcements in terms of the schedule. When will you get certain features, etc. So I strongly advise you to look to check those videos out. Also, by some crazy chance, if there are any bugs in the keylogger, and we have tested it on end on multiple machines, on multiple setups, uh, ranging from the stock install of Windows, going to basically trying to run it on a machine that is completely messed up it works without any problems of whatsoever there's an exa file you run you compile it and you can run it and from that point on it just works there are no problems with it but in case there are some bugs in case some of you report some bugs and i managed to find them i will post bug fixes on youtube as well and also you can find there a lot of free content that i play that i put out for people to see, to check out, to have a look around, to see if they are interested in that, in those kind of thing, in those kinds of things. But more importantly, this vlog is coming, and it will keep you updated in terms of features, so you will know what is coming, what can you expect, and what we, what we are planning to put out there for you to have a look and to learn from it, and how even and you can when you, for example, request some features. I will mention them in the vlog in all likelihood and I will state, okay, I can do this or I'm sorry, I just can't do it. I don't have enough knowledge. Or even if I don't have enough knowledge, I might go and ask a friend or somebody like that to help me out. But feel free to literally spam me with a request of features. Whatever comes to mind, even if it's not Keylogger related, if it, even if it's just something that I can put into program, feel free to just send me the private messages and believe me, I read all of them. I do, I really do read all of them. I value all of you as my students and I will read every single message. If I skip one, please don't hang me, just send me another PM so that you get pushed up to the top in the message menu so that I can see the message. 
Suggest a list of features, suggest as many as you can, and I will try to implement them. You have suggested a list of features before, and I have managed to implement most of them. Some of them I couldn't, but most of them I have implemented. And if you just keep on suggesting more, I will do my very best to ensure that you get them, if I can, of course. And make sure to check out the YouTube channel for the weekly blog updates where we will talk about, you will get to meet the whole team there, where we will actually talk about and discuss the future of this project, what features we can add, what features we cannot add, etc. and so on. I bid you all farewell now, and I wish you a ton load of luck with this course. I value your feedback, I value your opinion, I would be very grateful when you leave a review, if you leave a review, and I'm asking you to leave a review, to basically just write something down below. If you leave a bad review, please tell me why you left a bad review, what you did not like. If you leave a good review, again, please tell me, if you can spare the time, of course, what you liked about the course. But more importantly, if you do leave a bad review, please, please don't just leave one or two stars without a comment down below. Leave a comment down below and state, I did not like that. So this is what I don't like, this is why I gave two stars, three stars, one star, whatever. So that I can actually go for, take a look at it and attempt to fix it and resolve a situation which would satisfy you in a manner that is satisfactory to you. Anyway, now I bid you farewell once again and wish you a ton of luck.